welcome to Run With It, BC's only running fitness and health show. On this episode, we were in conversation with Canadian Olympian race walker Evan Dunphy. Plus, we're in conversation with registered dietitian Gloria Sang, who shares some healthy eating tips. And coming up later in the show, we talk to Shaw TV personality Fiona Forbes on her experience running the Honolulu Marathon. But first, let's go to a race report on the Vancouver Eastside 10K. Check this out. Despite the rain, over 2,300 runners took part in the fourth annual Vancouver Eastside 10K last month, a popular 10K event for all levels of abilities, and money raised went to charities such as to the Downtown Eastside Women's Centre. Can we talk a little bit about the charities involved? Yeah, we had the Downtown Eastside Women's Centre, uh, Breakfast Club of Canada, Greater Another. Vancouver <laughs> Food Bank, and uh, Watari Support and Counselling. Sorry, when there's four, I get a little bundled, but, you know, all embedded in the community and part of the community. And that's really what we want to be with the East Side. Okay, thank you very much, Cliff. You're welcome. Eric, congratulations on your. How did you feel today, I should ask? It felt smooth out there. Uh, despite the wet conditions, I uh, kept traction and uh, it was a good effort. So you're happy with that. And also, I want to congratulate you for placing 10th in the Rio Olympics. That's so awesome. Thank you. It was a yeah, career highlight. Uh, everything clicked on the day. And now they're it felt good. Notes got on most of my training able to execute well in, in, in real when it mattered. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. With me in the studio is Gloria Sang, who is a dietitian and founder of nutrition network Health Castle. Gloria is here today to share some tips on how to maintain your healthy eating habits, especially during the colder months. Welcome back, Gloria. Happy to be back. Oatmeal keeps me warm, especially during the colder months, as I said. So runners, it's good for runners to eat oatmeal, especially when you're training for a marathon. Absolutely, it gives you sustained energy. We do, we do need the carbohydrate to keep us going for longer run and oatmeal because of the specific fiber and carbohydrate content. It gives us that sustained energy we need. But most people have some problem with oatmeal. Either, first, <laughs> they don't love eating it every day, or two, they just found that it's too long to cook in the morning. Mm, so what are some ways to make it interesting? Well, um, I brought along today some instant oatmeal. Now, don't we all heard about instant oatmeal being bad because it has too much sugar? But I found instant oatmeal like this one actually has no sugar added and is actually gluten-free certified. And it also has some type of other protein like flax seeds and other um, grains like quinoa to go along with it. So it has the protein and the fiber to go along with the oatmeal. So it's a perfect instant uh, breakfast for the morning. You can add um, fruit. Berries make it very sweet. Absolutely, yes. you can sweeten it, sweeten it yourself with dry berries or cranberries, which is my favorite. Or just add some more protein, like nuts and seeds. That's wonderful. Now I like the instant oatmeal. It's only one minute, right? Um, and I put brown sugar. Is that considered? healthy? Absolutely. I mean, why not? When you sweeten it yourself, you don't generally sweeten with three, four teaspoons of sugar, unlike the instant oatmeal. So I always say if you want it to be sweetened, then sweeten it yourself. Or like quick oatmeal like this one. Um, it could have many names like quick oats, one minute oats. <laughs> Seriously, it only takes at most two minutes in microwave to cook it. So either um, instant or quick oak is still very quick for a breakfast, quick breakfast. Quick breakfast and is it, it's gluten free? So if you're worried about you know, if it's gluten free, it's organic, it's instant and all that. I just have to read the labels and the oatmeal itself is mm -hmm. gluten free, but because oatmeal usually is processed in um, other facility that may process wheat. So if you're actually going on a gluten free diet, you need to look for certified gluten free certified. oatmeal products. Okay. Now we talked a little bit about that. The, and yeah, the one minute oatmeal. So that's really quick. Now for people who actually don't like oatmeal, there are lots of people that say, well, I, I know the benefits of oatmeal. I know I need to eat more, but I just don't want to eat oatmeal every morning. There are other oats products available that are a little bit more crunchier, not as soggy as oatmeal. So I brought along some granola. Um, so you can see that granola has been toasted. So it's kind of like a snacks. Mm. Um, you could eat it in milk just like cold cereal. Or you you can just eat it as is. 
Oh, wonderful. And what's your favorite? Well, my, fav <laughs> my favorite and my kids' favorites is actually this one. Um, it's also toasted oatmeal. It has some chocolate in it, so my kids love it as uh, after-school snacks. And some coconut, natural coconut sweetened with it. So it is an, there are lots of products available that are generally more healthier than um, sweetened candies. Exactly. And the next one after... What's now this is muesli, um, Swiss oatmeal. Basically, uh, you can see from the packaging that it has not been toasted. So it is oatmeal. Oatmeal itself can be eaten raw. So you don't really need to cook it. You could actually eat it raw. So what do people use with muesli is they make it like overnight, overnight oats. So what do they do is they mix it with milk or soy milk or almond milk, put it in the fridge overnight, and the next day is all softened so you can have the oatmeal texture without cooking it. You can prep before your, you know, before the race, actually. Absolutely. I usually do three servings at a time. So I just measure everything up. So then in the morning, I have no time to cook. I just bring my muesli out and I can have an oatmeal breakfast. Wow, so you can add milk. Here you can add milk or just eat it as is. Absolutely, or add milk the night before and prepare it. So there you have it. Really great ways to enjoy oatmeal. And you should eat it two hours before going to, like before running? Absolutely, for okay. running, eat two hours prior to you know, practice or running time. Good information. Well, I want to thank you very much, Gloria, for coming on the show. I'd like to have you come back, and uh, we'll be right back after this break. Joining me is Shaw TV personality Fiona Forbes, and she's here today to talk about how she stays fit. Welcome to the show, Fiona. Ah, oh, thank you so much. So, tell us about uh, running. I understand you run. I do run. I actually started running. Gosh, it was in the year 2001, I guess. Uh, Michael Eckford used to be my co-host on Shaw TV actually dared me to run the Honolulu Marathon and I had never run anywhere in my life since maybe a relay in grade seven and uh, our bosses at Shaw were sponsoring us for the Arthritis Society and he had arranged that in advance and I never say no to a dare so I said yes to the full marathon and in the process of the training and doing the marathon itself I discovered I actually loved running and I've been doing it ever since. Well they start the Honolulu Marathon at 3 a.m. On, on purpose because the pavement heats up, which I had never experienced running because I'd never run. And there were 14 mile headwinds uh, for anybody that runs uh, will know that that actually makes it so much more difficult. But I finished and really that was my sole purpose was finishing. I didn't care about my time. It was getting across that finish line and I, and I did it. And I probably will never do a full marathon again, but it was a bucket list experience and, uh, and I loved it. Crossing the finish line, I will actually never forget it because I met uh, two women along the way, actually along the marathon route because I was having a hard time. Um, I didn't know but my arch had fallen in my foot. Another girl, her knee was blown out and then uh, Simi Sarah from CKNW, who people might know, she was going, uh, we ran into her at the 14 miler and we decided that three of us, no matter what, if we had to carry each other, we were going to get across the line together as a team and that got us across. So it was a pretty magical moment for all three of us. When I'm in good running shape, I try and do 20K per week, whether that's split up into really small runs. Oftentimes, what my goal is 5K, and from my house down to the Vancouver Yacht Club and back is exactly about 5K, so that's what I usually do. For me, the thing I love the most about it, aside from the exercise benefits is that, you know, your phone is off. I always run with music, some people don't like to, but I've got to have my running mix. And it's the time of the day where I actually tune out of all the noise of life, and I am focused on getting one foot in front of the other. Well, for me, I never thought that I was the right type of person to run. I don't consider myself athletic. Maybe I thought that I wasn't uh, good enough to run physically, but because of the training that the Arthritis Society supplied for the marathon that I did, I, it was with a group, with a trainer, and they gave you a schedule of how to start running, you know, whether it's a walk-run sort of thing, and 
it was just the first time getting it, putting my shoes on and getting out there. And I did start with, I think it was um, maybe three minutes running and one minute walking. 1K, 2K, anybody can do it. For running gear as far as clothes go, I, I am partial to Lululemon. I know a lot of people don't love their stuff, but I do. And again, it comes to getting the right fit. I am so retentive when it comes to leaving the house with my running stuff. I have to have the right things to wear so that I'm comfortable, because everybody knows who runs. If you're not comfortable, whether it's your feet or something else, you're not gonna enjoy your run. And Fiona, what do you like to eat before? I don't usually like to eat before a run because I find that that can make me feel too full or uncomfortable or it's going to make me get cramps as well. But I love to do, and it has to be for me, about an hour before my run. I'm a big supporter of local companies and one of those is Vega. Uh, it happens to be vegan if people are vegan. It's a powder that you can make an excellent, um, it's got, you can get the protein kind or you can get, uh, I think I get the I can't remember what Vega one is what I use, but it's got tons of vitamins and stuff in it. I'll make it with some coconut milk, unsweetened, maybe a little bit of frozen fruit because I like it to make it cold and refreshing. And also a little bit of coconut oil sometimes, but um, that's what I like to have about an hour. And then I, you know what, I ran my fastest 10K after having one of those smoothies, so I swear by it. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show, and maybe next time you can bring you. Oh, I will. He <laughs> Some dogs run with their owners. Chewie thinks it's tag and he starts running around me. It's not good. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Joining me in the studio today is a very special guest, Olympian Evan Dunphy. Evan has represented Canada over 20 times as a race walker in his 10 years on the national team. Evan's race walking journey began when he was just 11 years old, and this summer he placed 10th in the 20K race walk at the Rio Olympics, and a stunning fourth place finish in the 50K walk, which captured the hearts of Canadians when he showed true Canadian spirit with his sportsmanship an unwillingness to protest for a medal that he didn't feel would have been fairly earned. Welcome to the show, Evan. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, um, I want to just talk firstly about what inspired you to become a race walker at 11 years old. Yeah, so I, I began running track and field when I was nine. Um, my elementary school that I was at was doing a lunchtime popsicle stick run, uh, where you sort of run a, run a lap of the field and get a popsicle stick and you just yeah. do that try to gather as many popsicle sticks as you can and um, I was just infatuated by that from from the get-go it just became it's something it triggered something in little nine-year-old Evan that, that became obsessed with it and, and um, quickly found out I was quite good at running for a very long time and joined a track club and and um, some circumstances led to my brother starting to race walk and then as the, he was an older brother and I thought well if he can do it it can't be very hard yeah. and uh, so got him, he showed me the ropes uh, entered my first race kid in the start line told me well you'll you know I told him I want to break five minutes for 800 meters and he said you'll never do that in your first try and I beat him and I walked 458 or something like that and got a nice gold medal and I just thought yeah, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's amazing. Now, Evan, I have to ask you, in like the Sun Run uh, 10K, how fast can you walk? Yeah, so this, this year I, I uh, walked a 10K in 39, 20. So 39, 39 minutes, 20. 39 minutes and 20 seconds, and that was in the evening after having done a 40K um, training session in the morning. Oh my goodness! And so you, let's talk about your 50k walk and congratulations. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit what happened? Um, yeah, yeah. So 50k walk, uh, longest foot race in the Olympics. Um, it was. I, I went into it ranked 11th. And I knew I was in very good shape. Uh, my training had been going very well. I was in Europe for the summer training at altitude in, in St. Moritz in Switzerland. And so I knew I was fit and I knew I was ready for, for a big breakthrough. And I told myself I was just going to put myself in that lead group and see what happens. And um, lo and behold, that lead group sort of dwindled down to about 10 people very early on. And I thought, mm -hmm. okay, well, if I can come last out of this group, I'll still improve upon my ranking. So it was, you know, I had nothing to lose at that point. And I went to the front of the race at about 25K, so very early on in, in, 
in terms of, you know, we like to say that the race doesn't start until 35K. So might have gone, might have been a little overzealous in my first Olympics and, and thought I could, you know, take it to these big guys and went off the front and forged a, a bit of a lead. And uh, around 40K, they reeled me back in and overtook me and put me back into fourth place. And I sort of gave up. You know, I, lo I dropped at one point 12 seconds, 12 to 15 seconds behind the third place guy, and, and I just looked at my, I had so many family and friends um, there watching the race, and I looked at them at one point and just thought, you know what, I need to give this one last, you know, big effort, even if it kills me, to try to get, you know, get that guy up ahead and, and you know, do it for them that are, you know, that have been so supportive of me over my entire career. And so I put my head down and I went for it and I absolutely you know, killed myself to, to catch up to the, uh, the Japanese guy who was sitting in third place. And uh, somehow I managed to catch him and I, I passed him. Uh, I passed him about 49K, so 1K left to go in the race. Wow. And he responded and we sort of got tangled up and, he, and we bumped elbows and got tripped up a little bit and, and it just completely broke my focus and I uh, couldn't recover from it and he went on to, to win bronze and then I crossed the line in fourth place. And then after the race they took a look at the video and decided to disqualify the Japanese athlete. So I was then bumped up in third place. Um, all this is going on while I'm in the medical tent trying to recover from the race and unbeknownst to me. So. Then we found out, so I found found this out, and, and it was kind of like, oh, I didn't really know how I felt, didn't really remember what had happened, so didn't want to make a decision at that point. And the Japanese had appealed that decision, and we learned several hours later that, that the Japanese appeal had been successful, and he was bumped back into third place, and I was bumped down to fourth. And I was given the option to further appeal that appeal um, uh, to a higher court. And um, once I got back to the village and looked at the video and, and reviewed the situation, it just, to me, I saw nothing that wasn't part of our event, and, and uh, decided not. I elected not to pursue any further, and, and ended and the matter there. And you feel good. There's no regrets. No, just... yeah, I've I've haven't once regretted that decision, which is you know, which was something that I I knew when I made that decision that it was going to be the decision that I'd be able to live with for the rest of my life, and so far, so so true. Good for you, Evan. And I liked um, to have you come back on the show, and and I want to thank you very much for coming and. Yeah, so yeah, fantastic. all the thank best you for, to you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, and we're right back after this break. Joining me in studio is international recording artist Biff Naked. She is a breast cancer survivor, humanitarian, and now an author. Biff has been on our show to talk about her fitness program and how she maintains a healthy lifestyle. She's back here to talk about her recently released self-titled memoir. Welcome to the show, Biff. Thank you. What a wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, just, you know, trying to finish a book, did you have time to maintain a healthy lifestyle? Oh, certainly. I mean, I don't know how most people write books. I mean, I, I think that by the time people are ready to write a memoir, they usually have a busy family or they have another job, they have to juggle it. For me, I had to wait till the whole house was sleeping uh, until I could sit down and really concentrate to write. And then the hardest part was the editing process, when I would have to go back and re-examine, either cut short or do some rewrites or clarify, and that was very, I'm consuming and stressful. I, I literally had to leave the country to be able to get it all accomplished. Yeah, so what did it feel like when it actually was published on April 19th? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. I mean, it's uh, it's quite remarkable it, it, that it was all assembled and they did so many things, uh, like just the stuff that I would never have thought of, like the the paper stock that they chose and and they they printed a lotus on the spine of the book. You know, it was like a surprise. It was like finding a, I don't know, finding like a wayward chocolate bar. I don't know. It was just so. I just I just love working with them. So it's been really serendipity. Yes, and you know, what is the message that you would like people to to get from your book or from memoir? Um, honestly, I think everyone's story is the same. You know, I think that uh, basically by the time we're all 40, we've all had to deal with mm -hmm. loss, hardship, 
uh, misadventure, um, family issues, different health crises. Uh, I think that we're all really the same. I don't think my story is all that different from anyone else's, but hopefully I can make them laugh, you know, if they reflect on their own life or journey and they can laugh thinking of how asinine I was. <laughs> how, you, yeah, how crazy it was. You know, I read you have, uh, you know, a very close relationship with your mom and you would tell her everything. Poor woman. <laughs> the poor woman. She didn't ask me to tell her everything. I just did. And that's a wonderful relationship. You, you talk about in the book, um, not giving too much information, but uh, your drug abuse, um, your over, you know, your cancer. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's just... It's a story, and again, I think everyone has probably been through it, but I'm really lucky that I was able to kind of, um, I guess, transcend many of those different things. I think that we're all growing through life, uh, regardless of which direction our journey takes and what comes our way. I think that we're all basically doing the same thing, trying to evolve and get through challenges and hopefully learn something and mm -hmm. blossom at the same time. And it's, it's a relief, it's published, and uh, is, are there any regrets from anything you wrote in the book? Uh, uh, no, you, yeah, probably. <laughs> Honestly, I probably was too nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I've been told. I'm, I was way too nice. Yeah, but that's okay. That's, you know, a woman's got to have secrets, I suppose. But I'm happy with everything that, uh, that we worked on. Well, you know, yeah. you're, you're inspiring. And what has been the feedback been like? I've been lucky. I mean, if, you know, it's been really positive. People have responded very positively mm -hmm. uh, to some of the stories. Uh, you know, when I was a runaway when I was a teenager and uh, there was a, a lot of misadventure. Maybe perhaps um, it, uh, it might uh, be a bit of a uh, utopian view for some people on what it would be like to be a runaway, but that was just my experience. I was very lucky uh, to be able to go back home. And so a lot of teenagers are not able to go back home, so I, I do feel for them, and I know that I'm very lucky. Yeah, and you know, there's, um, you talk about um, your bands, you know, mm -hmm. Chrome Dog, and how, how is that? And it's very, it's bare, like you, you reveal your soul. I suppose, yeah. And, and I think it's okay to be vulnerable. It's yes, okay. Definitely, I think so. And I think, again, I think all of us human beings have that in common. And so I'm pretty sure that even though maybe someone else doesn't feel like they can share their story, and so I'll share mine instead, and then maybe they'll be satisfied. <laughs> they'll follow. That's right. That's right. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show, and thank I'd like you. to have you come back. I would love to come back. Thanks for watching. If you have a question or comment about today's show, go to our website on the screen. Until next time, run with it. Run With It is sponsored by Be Well TV, Firma Energy Wear, Hype Hair, Mallory's Fashion Network, Nike Canada, Vancouver Eastside 10K, and West Coast Wellness and Skin Health Center.